There we go. It is starting to sprinkle a little more, so I don't know how long I'll be able to keep you out here with me. But, a um, couple of things. Okay, look at this. I just got a dibbler. I've wanted a dibbler ever since I saw Charles Dowding with one and Monty Don because, you know, they're Monty Don and Charles Dowding. Um, I got one. Chris, um, with the hay bales, it seemed like it was a really good idea for planting just to push this down in, drop your seeds in. And um, so I ordered one and it's pretty. It was also not super expensive, which is why I got it. Um, because I'm not so the best at taking care of my tools. Here is my ever so unorganized collection of seeds. This is seeds from last year, seeds from this year. There are a few bugs inside because apparently bugs like the garden area, um, which, ew. I'm not so bad with bugs. Ooh, that was the other thing I was gonna say. There are some really interesting spiders that I'm noticing down in the bales. I have had some of the most interesting encounters with spiders on this property. Um, and don't know what they are and haven't seen some of them again, but one time I was reaching down for a lemon cucumber and I grabbed it and right next to my hand, like right here, I noticed a spider as big as my hand that was black and yellow. And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Never saw it again in the garden. I did see one more over by the lower barn um, that had a web there and it was beautiful. And of course I didn't have a smartphone at the time because I just got one like three years ago, four years ago. When I was in China, my dad insisted I take his smartphone. So I did. Um, and then, of course, it didn't work well in China, so I had to get a new one my second year in China. But, gigantic spider, this big, black and yellow. I looked it up, it, from what I could tell, it wasn't a poison one. Oops, I should be wearing my gloves. But, so I'm super excited about planting melons. And that is what these two trellises in the middle of the garden are gonna be, because they will get the most sun. And I figure melons are gonna need sun. So I'm just gonna put this little guy here. Boom. And let's see. Ooh, I got some different kinds of turnips to try. This is high mowing seeds. I just ordered some stuff from them and I ordered some seed potatoes from them. Um, my local farm store didn't have organic red potatoes and I didn't think about it earlier um, because I wasn't going to plant so many potatoes, but I know what I'm gonna do with potatoes now because I'm using those for sweet potatoes. And that's normally the potato end of the garden. And incidentally, I think that I see one potato coming up through the cardboard. I did not overlap the cardboard enough because I didn't have enough cardboard. Oh well, I'll put some more down. But potatoes are pretty serious and I, I think that there's one coming up there. It could be a weed because there are some weeds that we have that look like potatoes, which makes it hard to weed the potato area once they get established. I can usually tell, but occasionally I've pulled up a potato instead of a weed. Um, got some more turnips. I'm not sure where I'm, where I'm putting those. I just thought, I'm growing turnips for the first time. Let's grow more than one kind. So I might try those actually some down in the hay bale. So this is gonna go in the hay bale pile. Um, holy basil, which I've opened the package. And this is one of my problems this year is I have no idea where I planted the holy basil. Yeah, planted it somewhere in the garden. Don't know where. But I'm thinking I may have put it in the center area next to the artichoke where I currently have a hummingbird feeder that I'm gonna move. It's kind of cute there, but it's in the way. I like to walk just straight through and take the cart there and it's hard to get the cart through. Um, I had put a zucchini in the ground there last year and the zucchini did not do well there. I'd moved it down to the potato end after the potatoes were done and then they were fine, but I did not get as many zucchinis. So I planted this somewhere in the garden, just not sure where. Again, that's so weird for me, but I'm just going with it. It is that kind of year. Last year, literally, not like last year, last year, but 2017, 18, like that time until spring last year, it was kind of literally the worst year of my life um, thus far. Some more, uh, some more, Oh, I accidentally ordered two packs of these. These are Scarlet Ono Revival Turtup. I have extra pack. Um, ooh, I'm gonna give those to the, the school since I have those. Donate pile. Okay. 
Um, <laughs> they need a Long Island cheese pumpkin. I'm gonna put some pumpkins up on the hill in the hay. Um, they should go pretty well. I'll put them on the end without cardboard, I think. Yeah, I'll probably put them on the end without cardboard. Um, but they will help spread out, hopefully, and contain some of the weeds that come up through the hay. Because right now, I'm having a hard time distinguishing what's a weed and what's a flower, unless it's a thistle, in which case they poke me and I know. Um, but yeah, so Long Island cheese pumpkin, that's gonna go on the hill. So that goes in that pile. Jack be little pumpkin. Last year I tried to grow pumpkins out by the front, like our property line, the fence there. They didn't do so well. They came up and I don't know if it was too much water or not enough water or not enough soil. They came up and they'd start to like flower and then they just died back and then they'd start again and die back and they didn't have a chance. Um, ooh. Sagata sweet melon. This is a cute little melon. I'm gonna try those. So those will go on that trellis over there. Put those over here. Okay, that goes in that bed. Of course, a Kajari melon, because after hearing Jessica and Roots and Refuge talk about these for all last summer, I'm like, I wanna try those. So I got some of these. Those will go on a trellis. All right, I have to, I was not gonna say anything, but I have to because, <sighs> I don't really fangirl about anything, but apparently you give me a good gardener on YouTube and I'm like, oh my gosh. Um, and part of it was because literally 2017, 18 was one of the worst years of my life and building this garden and coming out, I'm getting all emotional, oh my gosh, stop. So building this garden, Sorry, I'm just, just gonna go with it because you're supposed to feel your feelings and not repress them and all that kind of stuff because it's better for you. Um, ew, the hands and the, that's not, that's not a good combo. Okay, remind me not to cry in the garden because, unless I'm wearing like gloves and I can take them off because otherwise that's just awkward. Um, so it was, a, it was really a crappy year for so many reasons, but like building this garden like helped me start coming out of it. Like I got off my butt, I started like, okay, I can make this garden live and it kind of brought me back to life, literally. But one of the things that was really awesome. Oh, cheapity Christmas. Oh, okay, so I'm just gonna go with it. One of the things that was really awesome was when I looked at YouTube and found like Charles Dowding and Roots and Refuge and those people who just are so nice. And I guess my faith in humanity has been kind of, oh, just for so many reasons, broken a little bit. And I'm, I've always been told I'm a super optimistic person, which I'm like, dude, I'm so not, I'm negative, whatever. I'm grumpy, oh, all the things. Um, I guess in New York, I was told I was optimistic, but I think almost everyone who's not from New York is optimistic in New York, because in living in New York's tough. Um, so, but finding those gardeners that I could, that were just talking about growing and, and being so positive and so kind to the earth and to themselves. <laughs> oh, last thing you want to do on YouTube is ugly cry. <sighs> In any case, so, <clears throat> Roots and Refuge, just like Jessica Sowers, is just, Sowers is just such a nice person. Seemingly, like, I don't know her. But you can tell, like, there are people that you're like, oh yeah, you may be pretty, but you're not a nice person. I so need Kleenex right now. This is awkward. In any case, like, they were just awesome last summer when I was coming out of, like, being all grumpy and having a crappy year and doing stuff. So, this morning, Like I said, I don't fangirl, I don't get over emotional about things, but here I am doing it, so I'm just going with it. Um, I had a message in my email that's connected to my YouTube channel, which you're watching right now if you're watching this. Hi! Thank you for watching, by the way. Um, the message was, Roots and Refuge has followed you on YouTube.
so I started, I like, I started crying. Like, why am I crying? This is like, first I was like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So this is totally a weird overreaction to like something that's super cool because like who doesn't want like people you think are awesome and doing good things in the world to notice you. Like we all want to be noticed I think just for being good people. And so often we're not. So often the things that get noticed are all the ugly things and the bad things in the world. And there are so many good people out there like if you're watching this you're probably one of those people because like I don't know what person who's like a total jerk who's gonna sit around and watch a 40 some year old woman in the garden who apparently needs a Kleenex at the moment. That's just not really something that those people are gonna do unless they're gonna troll and that's just weird and whatever, that's their thing. Um, yeah, so anyway, I had to grow this one because I wanted to try it. And now I'm gonna go get a Kleenex and I will be right back. You may never see this, but you probably will because like on the YouTube, you're supposed to share the things and the feelings and the whatevers. And I'm okay with that because so often we don't share enough of who we are with other people, which makes it hard for us to be seen. So yeah, I'm gonna grow this one on that trellis over there. So it goes in this pile. Oh. Give me a second, I'll be right back. Okay. I'm back and hopefully I will be able to focus more on the seeds and not on the crying. But I think it's just one of the cool things is that especially in climates right now, we forget that good people don't have to believe the same things that we do at all times. We can have, oh my gosh, there's a cat crawling up my back. Are you serious, Spot? <sighs> And of course, if I pick the cat up, I'm gonna be covered in white fur. Okay, and the cat is going to come here. Let's say hello to Spot, because Spot apparently wants to say hello. Look, there you go. There, you don't wanna say hello, you just want cuddles. I got it, okay. Is that better? Is that better? Um, but we forget that, like, there are good people who do not have to think exactly the same things that we do. Now there are some things that are deal breakers. People who, yeah, anyway. There are some things that are just deal breakers. But, we are allowing ourselves to be convinced that there are diametrically opposed viewpoints and there's nothing in between that connects us. And we are connected by so much. And yeah, that's just kind of, there's my philosophical chat for the day. You know, after tears, then we're gonna get into philosophical stuff and y'all are gonna stop watching. Okay, I'm gonna put the cat down. Okay, cat, will you stop crawling all over me? Okay, here you go, beast. Now I've got fur, oh well. Brilliant day. I have, I don't know how many different packets of, <laughs> of, zucchini I have. I'm gonna sort those out and see. Um, cat. The cat is now licking my leg. I am serious with these purrs. Um, the two that are here right now are Spot and Harley who were left behind when we took Cat. That is the camera pole. <laughs> oh my gosh, what a day. Um, I have some, I have some Blue Lake stringless beans. I had these from last year and I think I plant, so I planted some beans on the trellises at the far end. So down there, um, I planted my Chinese snake beans from Baker Creek. Hello. I am so excited about that. I don't know how well they'll do in the hay bales, but I thought I'd try it. Which leads me, ugh, I wonder if I should plant one down here too. I don't have that much arch trellis space and I really want it for melons. So hopefully they do okay. Cause there's only like five seeds in a pack there. Um, I don't think I need more than five seeds cause apparently those things get ginormous. Um, but I have, I planted two different kinds of beans and one of them I thought, I planted some peas that I thought were 
like vining peas but then I noticed they said bush but I'm pretty sure last year that they vined in any case those were from last year these I might just give to the school so let me put that in donate pile um ooh, I did not start this as a bait alpha cucumber uh, I wanted to try it but I have three other cucumber varieties. I'm gonna so run out of trellis space, but I'm gonna try this down at that end of the garden. So that goes down in the hay bale side of the garden pile. Another zucchini. Um, I'm gonna have to look at all my zucchinis and see what I'm actually planting. Grilled zucchini is so delicious. I love it, I love it. And when you get those zucchinis that hide from you, you know those kind that you swear that the day before there was no zucchini and then you look and there's a three foot long zucchini. I've had that happen before. Um, those kind of really good to like hollow out and you gotta blanch them first, like boil them in, for a little bit or um, cook them, pre-cook them before you put stuff in them, but hollow them out and make like a zucchini boat and then stuff it with like other veggies and if you want meat, if you're not a vegetarian, like some ground up hamburger, some spices and all that kind of stuff, put it into bake, then put some cheese over the top at the end of the baking so that cheese gets nice and crispy. <gasps> Such a good use. Anyway, I know people who don't like zucchini. I don't understand them. If it's cooked poorly, okay, if any vegetable is cooked poorly, it's mushy and flavorless. Um, some more radishes. I've planted like three kinds of radishes. I better make a radish pile. Radish. Some lavender. I was gonna, I was thinking of growing on the hill lavender and trying to sell it, but apparently the lavender market's pretty saturated. Um, but you can dry lavender and sell like a bunch of it for five dollars, which is a pretty reasonable price for dried lavender, and it's so pretty and it smells so good. Ooh, lettuce! I gotta plant some more of this. Some lettuce, little gem. I planted some of this in the fall, in August, I think, and it was pretty good, but it didn't make it through the winter. Okay, so that goes in the lettuce section pile. Good thing that this section of the bed, there's only garlic and onions right now, and it's open for me to sort things in. Uh, oh, some vita mach, mache. I planted some of this in the, that was actually the lettuce I pulled up and just uh, cleared out. It got a little leggy because I wasn't picking it enough, but it was, it lasted all winter and didn't have any problems and I didn't cover it. If I had covered it, it would have done better in the winter, um, but I need to plant some more of that. That goes in the lettuce section. Tangle leaf lettuce. This also goes in the lettuce section. Um, I'm, I like, I guess I'm super open to suggestions in some ways because I really like trying what other gardeners say are good, which is why I've done things like plant the dragon tongue bush beans. And I just want to make sure, yeah, this says it's a bush. Okay. I just wanted to make sure because I thought it was, at first I thought it was vining, but then I planted it on that side because I thought it was bush. I just want to make sure that I didn't plant them in the wrong place. If I did, I'll just have to put up a trellis. Um, I don't need to plant those. Those are done. So those need to be stored more properly for next year. This is gonna be, this is a long video. We'll see, I may not actually plant it. I'm just gonna talk about the seeds right now. Um, some more celery. I have the celeries that I started last August over there. I'll turn you just a little bit this way. This is a better view of the garden. Um, just right in that bed that I moved and I separated they're still growing. They're about this big, but they're still growing. And then I have my um, pink, Chinese pink sari that I got from Baker Creek that is ready to transplant. I have a couple of them hardened off and then the rest are hardening off upstairs. Poppies. Oh, I have to plant some more auroch. I don't think it came up. I need to go check. The spinach over there that I planted last week is coming up. But the stuff that I planted before the two and a half weeks of solid rain well, the lettuces that I planted before the two and a half weeks of solid rain are not coming up. The carrots are coming up and looking good. The turnip, I got a couple. The radish, I got a couple. And the beets, I got a couple. I should have more radishes up by now, so I'm pretty sure I need to replant that row too. 
Um, so this needs to go in the replant pile. Spaghetti squash. I got this last year, didn't plant it. The first spaghetti squash, I, this is why I call Basil Bell the vegetable thief. Well, and okay, there are many reasons I call Basil Bell the vegetable thief, but number one, first time I grew spaghetti squash, and this was before I had raised beds, they were beautiful. They were right here by the gate. The gate was down a little farther. Um, they were right here by the gate. They were kind of sprawling out. They were starting to get big and I was just about ready. There was one I was just about ready to pick and I'm in here working in the garden and I didn't have the gate closed because it wasn't really a, it was just like a piece of wood with wire in it that you kind of had to lift up and and it was awkward so I didn't close it all the time because the chickens didn't come in. They were well behaved. Yeah, so I'm, I'm working here in the garden. I'm working here in the garden. I come walking over by the gate and I'm where did my spaghetti squash go? It was just here. And I look out and over happily on the grass is Miss Basil Bell who has already eaten half of my spaghetti squash. She also is incredibly fond. She tore down my kale, my dinosaur kale that I had here that I pulled. She tore one of the plants half off. She doesn't like kale. She thought she, she does like brassica. She doesn't like kale though. Um, so she tore all the leaves off and ate the bottoms and left them scattered in here, which was the evidence that I knew that she was the one who did it because yeah, yeah. But so asparagus, broccoli, not safe with the basil bell around. Oh, green beans. I used to grow, I used to grow my green beans right here on this area because there's a fence and it was a great place to grow them. Basil bell would come up on, on the green beans growing on the outside of the garden fence would just bite off the bottoms. So that's why I needed a new place to grow my green beans. I want to try spaghetti squash down in one of the bales, I think. So that goes in the hay bale end. Another zucchini. Obviously some of these are going to the school. They won't have to get any seeds. Um, I, I think I have some Armenian white cucumbers that I started upstairs. Yeah, I don't think I need to plant any of those right now unless my starts don't come off, in which case I'll put these in. I've got some dwarf Greek basil, which who doesn't love, ooh. Which who doesn't love basil? Oh, my battery is about to run out, which means I'm gonna have to stop talking about seeds and actually get things planted. I'll probably have to go charge this and get some stuff done and then come back to you. This could be an hour long video. You don't have to watch it all. You've probably stopped after I start crying and I'll go out weepy, but I'm sorry. I'm. I'm so fangirling and that's not a phrase I ever thought I'd say because I'm not really like a fangirl type but good people yeah I will fangirl over good people any day so let's see what else do I have here how do I have more of that yeah Okay, so you can tell I do not have a good seed storage solution when I have two open packs of tangle leaf lettuce, neither of them used up. I mean, there's they've been used, but not used up. Because there are 500 seeds in these suckers. These are gonna last, I have like a thousand lettuce seeds. Whoa. Um, but I have two open packs. I need to organize my seeds. I'm going, mm, yeah. Let's see what else do I have in here. Ooh. Casper pumpkins, those are going on the hill. So that goes in the, where'd the hill pile go? I lost my hill pile. Oh, there it is, pumpkins. Some more vid match, which again, with 500 seeds in a pack, I don't know why I have this, but I think I'm gonna donate that one to the school too. I will share. These I'm super excited about. High mowing, the high mowing seeds, again, a Cinderella pumpkin. Those are so cool. Mom wanted pumpkins last year. I totally failed in that department. We're working on flowers. I figured I'd add some pumpkins in too. Um, her plan at this point is to make it to September because she wants to go for the first time to her 50 year. She's never gone to any of her high school reunions. So she wants to go to her two main schools. Um, their 50 year high school reunions are this year. So one I think is in July and one is in September. It's her plan to make it till then. So we'll see. So hopefully she'll get to enjoy some pumpkins. Um, Howden pumpkin, I, 
these just sounded cool. The Cinderella pumpkins, um, Laura on Garden Answer, um, who I also, that was really quite a helpful show. Plus she's in Oregon. I'm in Oregon. You know, there's an Oregon connection. At least for me, because she doesn't know I exist. That's okay though. Um, Cinderella pumpkin, super cute. These, I don't know about, I'm just out of grow them. Um, and some of the pumpkins, I did get a couple of pumpkins that are good eaters because I might make some like pumpkin mashy stuff. Really good. Um, pumpkin's great actually in stir fry. Um, golden beets, I love golden beets. They're my favorite beet. And I have planted them, but I need to go see how those are doing. So those can go in the already planted but check on me pile along with the holy basil. More radishes. I have sprinkled, I put radishes all along kind of the two arch trellises here. I haven't planted the melons yet. I don't know, I don't really know when I should plant melons. I'm gonna have to read the packages. Sometimes the packages don't tell me these. Oh, I have a bunch of Cosmos. I don't know when I'm gonna plant them, but they're so pretty. Oh, one of the bales, so this bale here, oh, sorry, I don't know if you can see. This bale here, the one that doesn't have the marigolds that I need to plant sitting on top of it. I put a whole bunch of flower seeds in, um, just right by where I have, I need to clean that hummingbird feeder. Ew, yucky. Um, right by where I have the hummingbird feeder and the grapes just to get some good, let's see, those are in the already planted pile. Uh, oh, I got a different kind of radish to try pearl radish. Put that in my radish pile. My marigolds. Uh, I took all the rest of my marigolds that I had because I have like, I think I have one more pack somewhere. These are these are to be recycled. Um, and I sprinkled them out on the hill where I'm going to plant the pumpkins and maybe something else. But I just did that because flowers, flowers. Okay, those are going on the hill pile. I think I want to put the cosmos on the hill. Not sure. I found. So there are some useful things, I guess, to the Facebook. But I found um, a video popped up last from last year this time that showed the garden beds just after they were built, and it showed the hill and the weedy and like, and that was after I had weeded the sucker, uh, tried to weed the sucker. I spent hours with a grub hoe, hours. Yeah, no help. I just made things worse. Because when you split blackberry vines and thistle, um, blackberry roots and thistle roots, they just make more plants. Yeah. We're trying some different things this year. So, ooh, I've got a whole bunch of sunflowers. So these are all going to go up on the hill. I've got cosmos, I've got sunflowers. Um, ooh, the Chinese red meat radish. I planted some of those already. But those could go in my radish pile because you always need more radishes. I have not tried roasted radishes yet. I am looking forward to trying that this year, which means I need to plant enough radishes so I have things that get ripe at the same time so I can make a nice little roasted dish. Um, not to be fangirly again, but I did miss um, Jessica over on Roots and Refuge was the first person I heard about roasting radishes from, so I'm gonna try those. <sighs> okay, this is my biggest like bummer this year so far besides potentially my tomatoes. We'll talk about those in a different video. Um, my hands are filthy, by the way. It's the garden. The kohlrabi, the purple, um, broccoli. These, I all started my bok choy, my cabbage, everything that I started that was a brassica inside in August and moved to the fall, into the fall to the garden was eaten over the winter. I've never had that happen. I mean, I've had, I overwinter stuff just because I, like, not that I know what I'm doing, but I'm just like, I leave the plant and it keeps growing. So I'm like, awesome. I can pick broccoli two years in a row sometimes. Just like the little, not another big head, but just like the little offshoots. Um, yeah, these are all gone. And I didn't start planting them again in like January, February when I should have, so I could have big plants to move out here. Um, because they were still, they weren't, they weren't fully decimated at that point. It really happened like February, the beginning of March. Yeah. And I wasn't thinking about bugs. I just, 
yeah so these I don't I think it's too late to plant again but I might try them down in the hay bales that end of the garden does get shade these are kind brassicas are kind of heavy eaters aren't they I'm gonna have to ask Christine Christine I'm sending you an email be prepared yeah or I'll just post it and you'll see it um, You've probably already seen it by now because you probably already told me. But I will, I think these are going in the hay bale side. Can't hurt to try, right? All they can do is not grow. Hay bale end. All right. Um, the Merlot lettuce, I love. I grew this last year, so delicious. And I planted some more this year, it is not coming up yet. So that may go in the I need to replant this pile with my Auroc. Did I put that in the right pile? Yes, I put that in the right pile. So many piles, so many piles. I've got, that needs recycled. Yeah, packets that are empty. Uh, some purple plum radishes, that goes in the radish pile. Those I all had last year, so those aren't new ones. Let's see, Armenian celery that I'm not gonna plant anymore. A free starter kit of kale, red Russian. <gasps> Ducks! Are you serious? Oh my gosh, today is an awesome day for birds. Um, we don't get too many ducks around here. We do get, well, hello to you too. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. Um, I don't know. Again, when I hold the camera up to the sky, I never know if you can see anything until I look at this. You probably can't see them, but maybe you heard them. We do get heron, and there's a white, I don't know if it's a white heron or a white crane, but they hang out in our out hayfield in the winter, like springish. Um, and occasionally I see ducks, but not very often, interestingly enough. So, red kale. I think I'm going to put that down in the hay bale end try that. It was a free pack. I didn't order it, but I've heard a lot of people saying it's really tasty, so I'm going to try it. Um, some Borlotti bush beans. Look at that cool color. Oh, Seeds Now. Hey, that's where I got these ones. Seeds Now. This one has actually the label on it. Um, huh. um, I'm going to try these. Probably Hay Bale. More Cosmos. I have so many... I think the cosmos are going out on the hill. Flowers on the hill. Oh, yeah, so mom. Okay, stop, cat. Uh, beefsteak tomato, I didn't plant these. I planted a pink beefsteak. Mom last year really wanted an early girl and beefsteak and I didn't plant them because I didn't really care about them, but she was very sad that she didn't get them, so I planted them this year because, you know, I gotta behave myself. Um, this one just goes in. Yeah, it's too late to, for the kids to start it probably. So I'll keep that. I'll just do those next year. Um, hey, that's a top of my head. That's a good view for you, isn't it? A weird hair thing's going on today. Let's see. Uh, Schwarzer Runder Radish. Huh, yeah. Now this is an issue. I got this butter cup um, I planted this in August last year it's a buttercup squash and I got one squash off it because I planted it in August um, I got one squash off it before the frost um, it didn't fully develop and I just put it in when I pulled the onions out I just put some other stuff in there just to see what happened and it didn't have enough time but I can't remember if I planted this last weekend or not why didn't I write things down? And I didn't put the labels. Okay, so today I came prepared with labels. Today I did. Um, some mixed beets. Those can go in the beet pile, but I already planted beets. We'll check on those. So I really have, I have three melons I want to plant. I feel like I have, ooh, battery's totally going to die now. I better. I have three melons I want to plant. I pull purple kohlrabi. I'll put that down there. Um, cabbage. 
I don't think, um, I don't, I think it gets too late for cabbage. I mean, like to start it, we're gonna get hot soon. And last year, I grew cauliflower for the last time, for the first time last year, and I didn't realize, like, you need to start it a little earlier. Um, and I got like two good heads out of it, but then the rest got really kind of mealy and buggy because it was too hot. Um, I came out, I was one day in the morning, I watered in the morning, but I came home um, after, like, I don't know what I was doing. And all of my cauliflowers, like the leaves were just like, <sighs> because it was 90 degrees out and I watered them back and they came back, but they really should have been picked far before that. And they weren't quite ready because I didn't plant them early enough. All right. I think I got an idea of what I've got here. I've got my celery and stuff upstairs still. So I'm going to get these started setting out and then I'm just gonna get planting. And I'm probably not gonna film that. One, because my phone's gonna die and it is actually sprinkling more now. And two, because I've already like talked way too long and then I got a weepy and then yeah, I fangirled and too much all in one video. Um, but today I will be planting. I may film some and fast forward it, but I'm already going to fast forward the taking the things off and there's only so much of a person working fast forwarded you can watch. Actually, I really enjoy it. I don't know why. There's something very satisfying in watching people get things done super quickly. Even though you know it's only because you pushed a little button on the machine and they go Zhoo -zhoo 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 -zhoo. All right. I'm gonna get to work planting now. I think I've got an idea of where I need to put everything. I'm just gonna lay my packets out and kind of really take a look and see what spaces I have to fill and what other things I can do. Um, but yeah, I really appreciate you just stopping by and hanging out and listening to me be a total emotional goofball. But you know what happens, we're all human. And if we allow ourselves to be human, I think it's really hard for us then to bring a lot of hate into the world because we're more empathetic towards other people despite differences, despite what else is going on. So I hope even if you're super different than me and you would never sit in a garden and cry over seeds and um, a YouTube gardener who is kind of awesome, just saying, uh, yeah, <laughs> I hope you still stick around because you're an empathetic kind of awesome human. I hope you're out there making the world more beautiful because you are in it and that your garden is finally getting started. I know some of my East Coast friends have finally started getting things going because the snow is melting. I can't believe it still snowed so, so late. Um, I mean, I can't believe it. It's weather, but still. So I hope that you are growing amazing things and I hope you'll come back so that we can do some more chatting because apparently I like to chat and growing together.